a CRUD operation in Spring Boot using Timelip and MySQL. There has been many uh, many um, videos on this, but uh, I'll be just yeah giving another version of Spring Boot CRUD so that uh, people get and people can understand it better. Okay. So in this project, I'll be showing a CRUD behavior of Spring Boot using Timelip and MySQL and what challenges I faced during the project and uh, and the and the versions like uh, and the in technologies which I'll integrate further in this project in future videos. Okay, so let's mm, get into the project itself. I have created a rev artifact project using Spring Initializer. I'll just uh, go to the pom.xml first. Yeah, I have the dependencies over here. The starter web, Spring Boot starter web, and the time leaf, Spring, uh, Spring Boot starter time leaf, then MySQL connector, starter uh, data JPA, then the default common loggings and test and Maven plugin are imported by default. Okay. So uh, I have uh, I'll share one thing one challenge which I faced over here is with uh, Spring version 2.4.2 we have to use Maven jar plugin version 3.1.1 minimum else uh, we will have some error as these two are not compatible yet. Okay, I'll show you. The workspace is still being built. Mm, I, I must stop the server first. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. There is an error in the first line. It's it's saying. One second. Anyways, I'll attach the error message in the comment section itself. So, let's continue with the project. Yep. So, I have this set of packages. One is the main package where my uh, main uh, Spring Boot application annotation is there. And uh, then the rest uh, sub packages follows. User bean. This is a this is basically an entity entity pojo where I have defined them with uh, the entity annotation and table annotation and I have specified the name as t sec user detail sorry t user detail and like the ID will be generate the ID ID column for entity entity bin is mandatory so provided over here generated value will be sequence and then column I have used this mapping. You can avoid this mapping, but uh, I have used it so that uh, so actually I didn't know about this. So I'll remove it in my second version of the project. Okay, I've used it over here. So these are the getters and setters. You can avoid getters and setters using the Lombok dependency. I'll use that in the next version itself. And then come back to there is a method which I have defined uh, which which combines the first name middle name and last name and returns a string okay this is very helpful I'll show you in the, in the video in the project itself and there is a two string method which I haven't used it but uh, I have like uh, imported it fine uh, now go to now let's go to my controller uh, let's go to repository first. See, and this is an interface which extends JPA repository. And the JPA we need to def, uh, uh, explicitly tell JPA repository that uh, whatever DAO operations which we'll be doing will be based on this bean, and the primary key of this bean will be of type integer. You can see over here the primary key, the ID annotation is uh, is used with user ID. And the integer type of that is int. So the wrapper class for int is integer. So I have used that over here, which uh, uh, which makes JP annotation uh, 
uh, which clarifies in JPA repository that the primary key of that uh, entity is integer. Okay. So next, come to service. User service. Okay. Uh, user service. Uh, uh, I have made. I have used the uh, service uh, annotation. So to so that during component scan, this class or scan as a service. Okay. Gets scanned as a service. And I have used transactional annotation, which uh, is not used over here right now, but we'll be using in the next uh, version of it for sure. And the auto wide annotation. Auto wide annotation is basically used to provide the dependency. For example, user dependency, a user user service needs I user repository as a dependency. So that will be auto wired uh, during the project startup itself. Okay. I have uh, used a logger variable. Uh, the logger is from SLF 4J log, and the log factory is also from SLF 4J. Yeah. Okay. And the class over here is login controller dot class. Okay. So after that, uh, there is a simple method which will fetch all the users. I have used a list interface with uh, in, with the uh, with the user entity. So that whatever use, uh, user, uh, whatever data it returns will be of type user bean, and that will be stored in the list object it's itself. You can see the return type of this find all method is list. Okay. So similarly, for fetch all users, I have save users as well. Uh, it will take the user bean, and we just need to return. Uh, we just need to call this user repository and the save method. Uh, inside that is uh, called and I have passed the data that I have passed the ob user object over here this this part is being handled by the uh, so, um, one second by the by the JPA repository itself we don't need to write the query part and all other I hope you all know all, all this now come to save update user this uh, this basically checks whether there is a id inside and uh, there is a data with that id is not is there or not see the entity which i have passed over here is they are asserting it like if it's not null and even the entity information is checking whether this is a new entity or old entity based on that they will persist okay persist or merge now coming back to fetch by user id here i'll be uh, using uh, only uh, here i'll be um, fetching only one user object so this is an inbuilt method of jpa uh, repository defined by id where i just need to get uh, you put the id of the user and here there there can be a scenario where we won't be able to find the uh, find the user id uh, user with that id so for that case uh, this particular find by id method returns an optional object see you can see the return type is optional and then the type of data that is the user bin in this uh, if there is uh, if there is uh, if there is no data with that user id then it will not return null pointer it will not give you null pointer instead it will give you an optional object which will not be having any data it's in, inside it itself now if suppose we have a uh, suppose we have a user with that user id then we have to get the object right so to do that we have used a dot get method which which uh, gives us the object from that optional method you can see optional dot get fine now delete user by user id here this is also this is a simple operation where I'll be use, uh, will be using the delete by id method of use uh, of the JPA repository to delete a user. Fine. Now come to user controller. I have used only one controller that is login controller where I'll be I have used uh, control shift. Uh, yes. I'll explain. Uh, this is the user dependency inside the controller, which has been auto wired. Next, coming to the logger part. Okay. 
in that service also I have used log but I am one second yeah here I, uh, I have specified the that the path I am inside user repository dot fetch all users method okay this is the use of log where we will be able to trace where the errors come from or it is easier for uh, us to detect now coming to login controller inside the login controller we have the first mapping is slash utp okay so now okay the server is down let me up the server first yeah so whenever i hit this url like localhost slash utp one second yeah localhost slash udb it will get into this validate user method and inside that uh, i have created a model in view object with uh, what this object does is it takes two variables it takes the model separately and view separately i'll show you uh, in the constructor itself i have defined the in define the view part and now for the model I have see I have used the add object method which takes a key and a value the key is something which uh, which is user defined whatever I will uh, I'll wish I'll give I have provided users over here and the user list which is so the data part uh, I have uh, fetched it from the user service with the help of fetch user method okay and with that uh, I am passing I am returning the model and view object I'll show you in the screen itself when I hit this link u slash udb I'm getting all the u list of users okay and inside the console you can see inside login controller inside user repository fetch all users okay so the next is slash user form to show a form where uh, the user will be I'll show you in the in the uh, screen only see create user uh, it is uh, you can see you can see over here it will be going to user form so uh, the user form URL is over here it will hit this method and uh, inside this method uh, I'll be redirecting it to user form view and inside that view I'm passing a new user bean let's see what happens yeah this is the user form uh, I'll be giving some name say Ashish I don't have any middle name but uh, I'll say Kumar Burman gender male date of birth 16 0 contact mm, I don't I didn't provide any validation yet so this is just simple crowd operation so no validation such if I submit you can see user with user ID and uh, some uh, sequence value and the name Ashish Kumar Burman has been created I missed a space over here okay no issues so I'll go to show user list See, this user has been added if I want to delete any any user I'll click I'll switch to delete okay before deleting uh, I just uh, I'm just uh, displaying the details like the user ID is this middle name contact name something something like that and when I'll delete the user with mm, with the name this has been deleted from the system if I go to user list I won't be having any name with uh, user with Navjot okay even even if I want to edit suppose uh, these two users having the same contact number I want to edit one so I'll click on edit and say in the in edit mode also the user ID is disabled because that is the primary key that is the only way we can identify a user so I'll change the contact and I'll press submit details of Anand Kumar Dubai has been updated successfully that's great uh, show user details yep you can see the de uh, data has been updated okay 
so the operations over here this is the user form where I'll be putting in the details of the user and when I hit the submit button I'll show you in the user resources section templates user form okay when I hit the submit button it will read redirect to slash user details inside the controller I'll have I'm have user details and what will this view be doing is it will take the model attribute user bean user bean is basically um, this user bean okay yeah here comes the best part about time leaf I have binded see you can see over here I am passing a new bean object new user bean object with this uh, what happens with this is that uh, the form receives the user bean object and and with the help of the syntax star third bracket and the variable name and the bracket close the syntax the syntax of uh, time leaf tells the form that uh, the uh, say you have a field name yeah the input type over here is text and the field will be having a values from this variable or if you have any value from the user itself then that value will be input in or it will be like binded to this variable of that bean okay this is this is basically binding sort of things okay uh, similarly I have done this for middle name the last name and gender blah blah and the date of birth okay so this is this way uh, I am getting this model attribute bean inside user bean and uh, I have already defined the, uh, the view over here and this is the logger part and uh, I am saving the user with the help of user service and we have a provision to get the uh, DB uh, to get the user it's uh, to uh, get back the user itself so I have used a cut object if user from DB that user will be having the database from the uh, con uh, details from the database and what I am doing over here is I am passing a message this is the hard code part this is the dynamic part and here I have used that method from the bean you can see complete username user with user ID something and name this has been created and this is I'm passing in the message as message and I'm returning the view let's go to success.xhtml here I'm taking this message and yeah if you take any variable from controller then you have to use the syntax it's all written inside the um, time leaf documentation we can go and just check over there okay here uh, show user list inside that I have used this is basically the context part and uh, yeah context path uh, context path of this up till this package okay so uh, with that um, the creation part is done now you we'll go to edit user form yeah here what I have done is uh, you can see and let's go to user dash dashboard first here I am displaying user in the in the in a form of a table 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 head table row table row I'm uh, statically defining the column uh, rows and then t in the table body part I am using the th syntax of time leaf or oh, before that the th syntax comes with the, by this I have defined this xmlns th and https timeleaf.org okay Uh, here uh, the th tag takes the user from users object uh, I'm passing a user list basically you can see over here user list 
that's why I've used a for each loop over here and with every user ID I'm defining them in the table data sorry with every user I'm defining them in the table and when it comes to edit part I'm passing an ID and that ID is basically user ID and similarly for de delete part I'm using that ID for deletion so that's why I'm getting an ID when I'm clicking on ed delete okay so I have got the ID and with that ID I'm fetching user by ID and this is the user DB from user from DB and uh, I'm simply passing this as a user bean binding you can see uh, uh, user form over here this is the this is um, considered as a th object like binding object so that's why I have used the same variable name to to for this uh, for this view as well yeah you can see th object user bean okay so now uh, I was over here yeah so I passed the data to the view and if you come to the view part I have made it read only the user ID and rest are editable and if I hit the submit button it will go to update user details and uh, in the update user details I am getting a proper user object and with that I am just saving the user and I am displaying the proper message that details of user has been updated successfully Similarly, for delete, uh, this URL will be hit and uh, fetch user by user ID. And uh, I have used a temp user ID variable uh, because. Uh, I'll t I'll tell you later about this. Okay. So I have a delete form view where I am putting the uh, user from DB and inside that user being binding variable. With that, uh, the model and view will be redirected to the delete form view. And after clicking on delete, it will show you a disabled page with all the details. And if we click on that, we'll get will the user will be deleted by you delete user by user ID method of the user service. Okay the challenge which I faced one more was see uh, the bean uh, the bean over here see for the date of birth I am using the date java.sql.date initially I used uh, java.util.date so uh, so due to that uh, the format exception was happening and then I had to change it to sql.date then it's working fine uh, I'll show you the application.properties files yep here I have used update so that we don't have to create the tables every time and and I have used the mysql connector this is the schema name the first name last name is root and time leave catch a false so that uh, time leave doesn't uh, caches the uh, names every time okay so that's it guys i uh, hope you like the video and if you have any doubt or want to ask us asking something uh, i'm i'll be, I, I will help in the comment sections okay i'll show you the demo once again I suppose not Jod, Kumar, Sharma, and choose and some other. Okay. You can see user with user ID is now and then Kumar Sharma has been created. Okay. So this is not a weird, this is not a proper name, so I'll edit the name. I'll have an edit my name to no, so keep the middle name blank and last name should be saying okay 
that's it. Uh, submit has been up, sub, uh, has been updated successfully. Show user list, uh, but I don't like uh, Nupchot. So I'll delete it. I'm deleting. This is the confirmation before deletion, and I have deleted. I'll go to show user list, and we don't have Nupchot over here. Thank you, guys.